and pharmacist Ben Fuchs is a top formulator in the country and compounding pharmacists and smarter than most doctors I know. Most doctors I know say talk to a pharmacist. Well, that's what we talk to. He can quantify with studies, I have a stack of them, how the first three months of milk is literally activation juice and it doesn't carry the memories, the race memories, it activates the race memories. And it's also designed for the stress the woman's under, what is she facing, what's happening with her will affect her milk to then program the baby with the type of threat they're facing to select the genes to be flipped on. That's in the studies. Now, how, now, how, how nanotech is that of God or the universe, whatever you want to call it, that Whatever the woman's going through in her pregnancy, her stress, whatever she's going through, whatever she's got deficiencies in, everything, it, while the baby's in utero, through the placenta, the body's trying to get the baby ready for whatever it's facing in the environment. When the baby comes out, the milk is now programming for whatever the woman's facing through the baby to activate genes. And that's in major studies. He's here to join us just on that one area. You, you go look at the major... In fact, you guys can do this. Run to HEB and buy me a couple of the establishment formulas right now. I got some. I don't have any cash left in my wallet. Just grab it from Weldon. Run there quick before Fuchs has to leave us 20 minutes in the next hour. Because I meant to do this and I forgot to do it. I want to show you what we've done on air before with Mike Adams when he came in. I mean, it's like 50% sugar or, or high fructose corn syrup, 25% more sugar, 75% sugar, almost no fat. And then it's not even the type of fat you need. Then it's soy that basically programs the male babies to be feminine. I mean, we've got the expert here to join us, brightsideben.com. He joins us uh, now to break this down. But imagine the diabolical nature of taking, I mean, women have breasts for a reason. All mammals have them. Whales, you name it. It's not a conspiracy theory. Babies need mother's milk. That's why genetically men like women with nice breasts because, you know, genetically we're saying that can produce a lot of milk. You know, women with wide hips, that's you know, Marilyn Monroe. This is a woman that can have kids. This is a woman that's feminine, wants to take care of babies. Well, they don't want women feminine. They don't want men to be warriors. They're attacking the species like the globalist or an alien programming group. And I don't believe that's what they are, but I'm saying it might as well be that. They're psychopaths who are alien to the normal human activity who have scientifically decided to destroy us. Pharmacist Ben Fuchs, we're skipping this network break. It's so important. Thank you for joining us. Uh, you've heard my layman's breakdown of these reports we're going to go over. Break it down for us. Well, here's the bottom line. Epigenetics means power, and it means power for us. Genetics, the, the notion of genetics has to do with destiny. It says that whatever is in your genes is the way you're going to be. And this is one of the most disempowering ideas in all of health and in all of biology. The idea of epigenetics and the idea of a transcendent level of control over the genome, which is what breast milk represents, by the way, puts the power back in the hands of the individual, takes the power away from the hands of the, the leviathan, as I call it the beast, the state, the model, however you want to term it. And this is one of the most powerful ideas that we have in all of health. And it's something that we, we've known about for a long time, but because of the hegemony of the medical model, the hegemony of the medical professionals, most people believe that what is ever gonna, whatever is in their genes is the way that they're going to be. How many times have you heard people say, oh, it's just in my genes, oh, that's my genetics, oh, it runs in the family. The notion that there is a control point that is transcendent or epi, that's what the word epi means, to genetic destiny is a powerful, powerful idea for the individual, and it's something that we want to exploit. You were bringing, uh, you bringing, uh, uh, bringing to, uh, uh, to the forefront the idea of breast milk. Breast milk is an epigenetic vehicle that is designed to turn genes on and off in response to the environment that both the mother is confronting and the baby is confronting. Please, mothers, breast milk is a divine programming source. Alex, you hit the nail on the head. You called it a, a high-tech programming device. That's really what it is. It's a divine programming device that's designed to keep a baby healthy. We know that epigenetic factors Let's just face breast it, milk women's breasts are magical. <laughs> That's right. They're, everything about them is magical. But what they secrete is especially magical in terms of epigenetics, the factors in breast milk, breast milk, aside from the nutritional factors. You know, you can get formula that has the vitamins and you can get formula that has the minerals and some of the cofactors. But these epigenetic factors are things that we've just begun to understand over the last 20 or 30 years. Formulas don't contain those. It's literally full of the antibodies, everything. And, and again, quantifying this from the studies, but I want you to expand on it with your expertise studying this for years. 
pharmacist Ben Fuchs joining us, is that suddenly there's all these genetic disorders and people are suddenly, you know, 10,000% increases in, in pediatric children's cancers, 3,000% in breast cancer, and they go, oh, it's because you have bad genes. Well, right. of course, if you're not getting what you need, you are predisposed in your genes to malfunction this way if you don't have the building blocks and you weren't breastfed and you're give, if you're, instead you're given a bunch of deadly vaccines, they want their system. I mean, why should anyone get a hepatitis shot at birth? I mean, is the baby going to be having, you know, sex? Or is the baby going to be injecting heroin? And right. it's, it's incredible. Breast milk is the best vaccination you could get. It's God's vaccination. Breast milk protects us from uh, fatty liver disease. It protects us from autoimmune disease. It protects us from cancer. It protects us from cholesterol and blood fats. It protects us from heart disease. These are factors that are in breast milk that the baby is going to get and that are going to impart protection for the baby for the rest of the baby's life. This is so important. And that doesn't even include the psychological benefits, uh, the psychological benefits to these epigenetic factors. We know epigenetic fact, lack of these epigenetic factors can result in, in, in stress diseases and in, in uh, uh, alert helplessness, emotional disorders, autism, schizophrenia. This is above and beyond the, the protection that we get from physical maladies. And by now the way, while you're talking, I'm showing mainstream research papers from prestigious universities. This is well known. That this has been well known. I graduated pharmacy school in 1986. I had professors telling me about epigenetics back then. Today we're starting to hear about it more and more, but we've known about a, a control point of the genetics, a control point to genes for 50 or 60 years. In fact, the word epigenetics was coined, coined in the 1950s, I believe. So these are not new ideas. These may be new ideas to the mainstream, but these are not new ideas to biologists. By the, by the way, way, I'm showing .gov, the Centers for Disease Control, the NIH, you name it, they're all admitting this. Well, geneticists know yeah, this idea of one gene, one protein, one gene, one disease. Today I was reading about how they found the gene for baldness. You know how you hear this every once in a while? Yeah. Oh, they found the gene for Alzheimer's disease. They found the gene for cancer. There is no one gene for baldness or for Alzheimer's disease for, or for cancer. Genes turn on and off based on epigenetic factors that are nutritional, that are emotional, that are psychological. And what's more, and this is very important when it comes to things like genetic mo genetically modified organisms, genes relate to other genes and turn on and off via communication with other genes. So when you manipulate the genome by pulling in, pulling out genes or putting in genes, you're manipulating the entire genome. And you never have no idea what you're going to be getting. This is such an important idea for, for scientists who to be so glib with the fundamental component of the intelligence of life, which is what the genome is. is uh, well, obviously, it, mammals need their mother's milk. And they've pretty much got it to the point where they harass women that try to breastfeed. The media acts like it's weird. I mean, if they have their way, someday it will be a, a conspiracy theory to say that women ever even breastfed or even gave birth. Notice how they, like 60 some percent of hospitals now, force women to have cesareans because then every other baby they get to do that. Uh, it affects the child. Uh, oh, I, mean, yeah. I mean, it's Cesarean. just all a scam. When a baby comes out of the womb, it's coated with bacteria, and that bacteria become that baby's personal health guardians for the rest of that baby's life. That bacteria, those bacteria that coat the baby as it, as it leaves the womb and enters into the world, they get into the baby's mouth, they go into the baby's digestive tract, they implant in the baby's womb. Those bacteria protect a baby from colon cancer, from digestive distress, from heart disease, from, from uh uh, emotional disorders from autism and when you have a baby who's born cesarean he's completely deprived of those bacteria so what are the what do the doctors tell you oh, we'll just give you a little supplement we'll give you a little probiotic we'll give you a little formula this is not the divine way this is not the way that nature has intended it has intended babies to be born into the world it's no wonder Alex that we're confronted with the largest chronic disease crisis in the history of mankind despite the fact that we have the most medicine. It's no wonder people are on antibiotics from birth till death. It's no wonder people glow in the dark now and, <laughs> and you know, look like they can't even pick up a five pound weight. Oh, and we haven't even gotten to the bisphenol A and the pesticides and the, the toxic effects of uh, epigenetics, the, the relationship between poisons, the relationship between pollutants, the relationship between uh, prescription medications and the genome. Well, I want we you know. to get into that in the next segment, but right now, because I heard your show a few weeks ago, you were breaking it all down, get into the science, the different cofactors that's in the breast milk so people understand how important this is that the major wiring of the brain happens the first two years 
uh, you know, and, and then up to age five, it's fully mapping. I mean, this is the time. They tell, put kids on low-fat diets. Well, it's trans fats that are bad. Don't children need more fat than adults? Heck yes, and what's more, they need more cholesterol than adults. How do you like that? Cholesterol, which we've been talking about, and this, you, you and I have been talking about it for, for probably for three or four years now about how important cholesterol is. Cholesterol is a prime building substance, not just for, for cells, not just for muscles, but for the brain and for the nervous system. Alex, it's like there's a, a conspiracy to destroy our minds. There's a conspiracy to destroy our ability to think clearly. There's a, a, a conspiracy to destroy the prefrontal cortex, the executive center, the choice center, the part of our brain that makes us human. There's a conspiracy to promote the lizard brain, the reptilian brain, the, the survival brain, the fear brain, the part of our brain that shuts down our ability to heal and to thrive. We are in survival mode psychologically, we're in survival mode emotionally, and now we're in survival mode epigenetically and physically through manipulation of the genome through prescription drugs, through poisons in the environment, and through lack of information, through misunderstandings that promote the idea that we have to be what our genetics say we are. The fact of the matter is you go to any geneticist and they'll tell you that this idea of one gene being related to one protein or one gene being related to one kind of specific physical feature is not true. It's simplistic and it's ignorant and it, what's worse, it's a, a control trip and it's a, a profit center as well because it allows pharmacology, uh, pharmaceutical companies to come up with medications that manipulate the genes. And this is what the latest, the latest uh, pharmaceuticals do. They work at the genetic level be, uh, uh, with this idea that by pharmacologically addressing the gene, by pharmacologically changing the gene, you can impart health. How the heck can a human being who knows nothing about the genetics of the body, which is really basically what we know, we, one to two percent of the gene well, just, is thought to well, be yeah, Let me interrupt. Just look at what antibiotics were great but overused, all the nightmares they created. Look at how everything ends up turning out to be worse down the road. Can now they, now? they've got thousands of facilities with gene guns, as you right. know, just randomly splicing RNA, DNA, chimeras. I mean, uh, talk Can about that it? some. What do you make well, of crossing? Chimeras? Yeah. Yeah, well, H.G. Wells, wrote, how do you like the fact that H.G. Wells wrote The Island of Dr. Moreau in 1896? 100, 120 years ago, he knew that there would be this idea of manipulating uh, uh, genomes of different animals, building things together, creating these He wrote about atomic wars in 1900. He was a master Illuminati. Is, is, isn't that amazing how he knew all this stuff? It's crazy. But the idea of chimeras is, is really what we're confronting. This is the, the, the next likely step in genetic modification. We have GMO plants, which are basically chimera plants. How how big a leap is it to chimera animals? How big a leap is it to chimera humanoids, for that matter? They've already done it. They don't have any rights. They just keep them in laboratories. It's on record. Uh, but, I mean, you know, the animal rights groups talk about animals having rights, which I agree they do have some, obviously. How we treat animals is how we treat ourselves, especially the higher order, elephants, dogs, you name it. But, but what about these chimeras? Don't they have rights, you know, these, <laughs> these pigs that have human I genetics in them? Right, chimera rights, that's the next step, you know? I mean, we have, we have, it truly is a, a scary world that we're confronting. But Alex, I'll tell you, I, and I've said this so many times, we can't let fear get the best of us. We've got to expose this. We've got to not participate in the system that is not designed for our benefit. It's designed for, as you said, a select few, an elite few. And we have to refuse to participate in this in, in all ways. We have to stop eating the corporate swill. We have to stop participating in the medical model. We have to begin to understand how to control our own bodies, because at the end of the day we do have no no i agree in control. the next segment i want to get into solutions but uh, and i want to be clear and I, i'm not saying you're saying this but i want to be clear i'm not fear-mongering i want people to know how bad it is like telling my neighbor hey your house is on fire right you have to know exactly because people need to know we're already deep into this we are deep into this. That's absolutely the case. I mean, well, by the time the lay public hears about something, it's already been in the in the scientific literature for decades, sometimes for three or four, even five decades. So if you hear about something in the New York Times or in the Daily News or in Time Magazine or Newsweek, you can rest assured that scientists have been discussing this in the literature for decades, and it's the same with epigenetics and genetics. Uh, genetics, uh, the, the genome was discovered in the 1950s. Epigenetic, the ideas of epigenetics was discovered shortly thereafter. Today, we know that our genes blink on 
on and off like Christmas tree lights, but still, not only does the average person not understand this, the average medical professional doesn't understand this, that our genes are as flexible as our environment, and this is the beautiful thing about epigenetics. Epigenetics are the way, is the way that the genes read the environment. Could it the become a drug to have uh, lactating women uh, start selling their colostrum to people that never had it? Even though you won't get your family's genetic history, you will get the genetic history of those people? You know, if you think breast milk is powerful, and breast milk is powerful medicine, colostrum is is the breast milk of the breast milk. It's the it's the core of the breast milk. It is the most concentrated food on the planet. I want you to describe what comes out the first few days, then the weeks, then months, and then I want to get into solutions. But then I also want to look at what you're saying about uh, epigenetics, the negative stuff. What is the bisphenol A doing? What is the uh, other chemicals out there like the glyphosate what is it doing with our genes well they admit it, it's flipping on the breast cancer we'll be right back with ben fuchs stay with us pharmacist ben fuchs works with me at infowarshealth.com with the products that we've got there that have really turned my life around with the beyond tangy tangerine the pollen burst plus uh the uh, different uh, chondroitin products they have for joints and things when i've had sports injuries I used to be a big exercise guy, and then for 15 years, stopped working out except for hiking and literally gained almost 100 pounds. And I've lost now total about 60 pounds of that. I need to lose about another 35 pounds, and I'll be back to what I weighed in the past. And uh, while I'm no uh, Errol Flynn today, I will undoubtedly, the way I've been doing it, slowly get back to where I was. But what's really supercharged me and took me the rest of the way is not just the InfoWarsHealth.com products. You can go there and sign up and get auto ship and get free shipping and other discounts at InfoWarsHealth.com. If you go to InfoWarsLife.com, you have the proprietary products that we have put out uh, working with people like Dr. Edward Group and others. Super male vitality with eight concentrated herbs and fruit extracts that gives me better libido, energy, stamina, I mean, quite frankly, folks, it's 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 simply amazing. You've heard the rave reviews from listeners. There's a video called Alex Jones is a fat ass up on Infowars.com. People says people say, has the site been hacked? No, it's a joke. Because it shows videos when I got to my biggest and it's meant to be a catchy headline. And it's got some of the testimonials right there on the site, some of the feedback from people. But Super Mel Vitality is no joke. And it ends up funding our operation as well. Tip of the spear promoting freedom, free internet, free speech, religious freedom, health freedom, Second Amendment freedom, national sovereignty, supporting women to be women, men to be men. If you want to be something else, that's your issue, but don't attack us. It's all up at InfoWarsLife.com. We'll also add on the front page of InfoWarsLife.com the new video uh, that is titled Alex Jones is a Fat Ass. So go check that out at InfoWars.com if you want. And I still have a little bit of... Uh, belly fat and a little bit on my face but I'm telling you soaking wet out of the shower folks I look like a new person and soon I'm going to take some photos of, of myself in shorts just to show people the transformation and I got family photos of me about 5 years ago at 275 pounds versus 225 pounds and it is just night and day ladies and gentlemen the same amount of exercise I mean Five years ago, I started swimming two miles a day some days, trying to jog, trying to work out. And I wasn't, I mean, I'd battle and lose 10 pounds. And it was all not having the proper supplements. So the longevity products at InfoWarsHealth.com brought me a long way, and they're a big part of it. But the InfoWars Life products are really bringing me the rest of the way. I mean, I still work till 2 a.m. some mornings. I still go out and do stuff. I still fly to you know places and don't sleep. And this stuff literally is more important to me than coffee now. We do sell high-quality, organic, uh, shade-grown, volcanic coffee from southern Mexico, the Wake Up America coffee. It's all at InfoWarsLife.com. Super male. I take a little more than recommended dose. For a while, I took half of it because I couldn't handle it. Now I've gotten where I've got a tolerance. I take it morning, noon, and night. And here is my noon dose at 1237 Central. And then we have the proprietary Survival Shield nascent iodine. There's no other iodine like this anywhere. There will be a new iodine starting next week that I've, I've, I've got to say, folks, I wouldn't even call it an improvement. It's different. 
We're going to break all that down, but this is simply amazing. This is what helped my skin get healthier. I wasn't getting tans. When, even though I'd go out in the sun, I would just burn until I started taking this type of nascent iodine. And I'd heard pharmacist Ben Fuchs talking about it himself. So when I was looking at the best products to come out with, I did a deep research, trying out a bunch of different brands, trying out different systems. And then I found what pharmacist Ben Fuchs was about to come out with, and I was like, wow, this is the way to go. And it turned out a lab had been making it for 20 years, but nobody knew about it. So the Survival Shield nascent iodine, available at InfoWarsLife.com. There's a bunch of other great products, the lung cleanse, you name it. So good for my allergies. Just try the challenge. You'll find out how real these products are, and then you'll continue to purchase them, and that makes it possible for us to put out this information. So get revolutionary health products, supplements, while supporting revolutionary media. And I want to thank you all for being patrons of InfoWarsStore.com, InfoWarsLife.com, InfoWarsHealth.com. And you can all call toll-free to ask any questions or to get a free catalog or to order over the phone. Uh, our polite crew of customer service is ready to take your calls till 6 o'clock every night. Then it rolls over to the call answering center. They're great folks as well, but they can't answer all your questions. They can just take your order. 888-253-3139. 888-253-3139. And again, it is your purchases, your PrisonPlanet.tv memberships. When you buy the ProGun t-shirts, whatever the case is, that makes this possible. We don't take your money from taxpayers like NPR and from the Rockefeller Foundation like MSNBC. We, we get it from listeners and viewers like you supporting us. All right. Uh, going back to Pharmacist Ben Fuchs, I'm going to shut up now as much as I can for the balance of the hour. Get into what's in colostrum, what's in breast milk, and then get into other epigenetics, positive things uh, people can do from your deep research and all the studies you sent me. Well, we'll talk about the positive things here in a second. Uh, by the way, there's a whole new branch. It's not that new. It's probably about 20 years old of uh, science called nutrigenomics, which is the study of the effect of nutrients on the genome. As it turns out, nutrients are powerful epigenetic factors. As a matter of fact, most women know that when they're pregnant, they got to take folic acid to prevent birth defects. Well, as it turns out, uh, folic acid is an epigenetic factor that protects against a, a major birth defect called spina bifida. So epigenetics has been used even by the medical mainstream without even calling it epigenetics. We'll talk about that here in a second. This idea of colostrum and breast milk, you know, you ask what's in colostrum, what's in breast milk? We know of nearly 100 different compounds that are in, in colostrum and breast milk, and, that, and that's just the ones we know about. Chances are we'll find more as we do more and more research. Colostrum being a form of breast milk, being a form of, of uh, mother's milk. It's the first mother's milk, uh, the first milk that the baby gets. Uh, and like breast milk, it contains immune regulating substances, substances that build the immune system, something called PRP, proline rich peptide. That's a, a hormone like substance that stimulates the thymus, which is the body's main immune gland. This idea of the immune system being built by mother's milk and by colostrum is very important to recognize. And by the way, when I say the immune system, I mean the digestive system as well, because the digestive system and the immune system are basically the same system. Some 80% of your immune activity is located in the digestive tract. See, when babies are born, when mammal babies are born, because mammals tend to have big heads, and especially humans have big heads, they have to come out of the womb prematurely. So human beings and mammals come out of the womb prematurely, which means they're uh, specifically their immune system and their digestive system are not fully matured. And this is a big problem because uh, toxins get into the body through the digestive tract and immune system that is suppressed will compromise the baby. So nature has devised this wonderful system for growing the digestive tract, for supporting the growth of, uh, of, the, uh, of the immune system, or supporting the growth of the digestive tract and supporting the healthy immune system. And that is what mother's milk and that's what breast milk is. And that's why when you say what's in breast milk, it's hard to quantify all the different things because there are so many of these growth factors and immune factors and anti-inflammatory factors and transfer factors and antibiotic-like substance, substance, something called lactoferrin, something called transferrin. These are substances that bind iron, uh, iron being very important for bacteria. But that's binding just iron. junk that came out of the right. creature that just made you. Right. That's I mean, why junk. would this female have anything yeah. uh, for the creature? It literally just, just wove in its womb. Right. I mean, you're a weirdo to think that babies right. need 
what came from the uh, place it was just created. I mean, that's Alex, crazy. Alex, we all need breast milk. It's not even just babies. Everybody needs breast milk, but especially developing infants who are whose cells are dividing rapidly and, and who can't eat food. You know, babies can't eat food. They're not supposed to be, they're not designed to be eating food. So they, nature has designed this exquisite system of growth factors and fats and vitamins and minerals that are in the breast milk. So what's in breast milk? You've got growth factors, immune factors. You've got carbohydrates, uh, something called oligosaccharides, something called uh, glycoconjugates. Uh, glycoconjugates. These are substances, sugars, that adhere to specific sites on the digestive tract, on the gastrointestinal tract, that keep bacteria from getting in. You've got bacterial support, as I was saying earlier. So the baby's microbiome, that is the bacteria that will live in the baby's gut for the rest of the baby's life, will implant and proliferate appropriately these uh, bacteria produce vitamin d these bacteria make b vitamins these bacteria help fight bad bacteria you know one of the biggest problems we have in our culture in terms of health is digestive distress digestive disorder some 60 to 70 percent of americans are dealing with some kind of digestive stress or digestive disorder 30 percent of americans have uh, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease another pseudo uh, a sort of digestive problem how much of this is related to the fact that babies are being born cesarean how much of this is related to the the fact that babies are not being breastfed. How much of this is related to the fact that even if mothers are savvy enough to be breastfeeding, they're typically not going to be breastfeeding long enough, or they're nutritionally deficient and their breast milk will be nutritionally deficient. How much of our uh, of this epidemic of digestive disease, as well as immune disease, as well as cancer, as well as blood diseases and heart disease, is related to the fact that we're not getting the breast milk, the babies are being born cesarean? We don't know. So anyway, going back to all these components that are in, in breast milk, one of the most important are uh, uh, prostaglandins. Prostaglandins are anti-inflammatory factors that keep inflammation down. We know that almost all disease states have an inflammatory component, and we know that many of these disease states are initiated by inflammation. And uh, pro -in uh, anti-inflammatory factors that are in breast milk suppress pro-inflammatory factors that are in toxins, that are in food, the foods that we eat that uh, are, are inc uh, increased by lack of nutrition. There are also substances that help control the appetite of the baby. There's a substance called leptin that's found in breast milk. Leptin is a little protein that suppresses the appetite. If, uh, many folks who are interested in weight loss know about leptin and know about strategies for increasing leptin. Well, as it turns out, breast milk is a wonderful source of leptin to help suppress the baby's appetite, to help keep the baby satisfied. There's also special proteins in breast milk that help vitamins travel throughout through the blood, specifically fat vitamins like vitamin D and vitamin E. And vitamin A, these fatty vitamins don't travel through the blood effectively because they're fatty and the blood is watery. They tend to glob up. So nature has a system of binding proteins which literally shuttle these, pro these vitamins around through the blood. Well, guess what? Breast milk is a wonderful source of these vitamin binding proteins. Speaking of vitamins, the fatty vitamins, which are so important for health and so important for building tissue, are packed in breast milk, as are all fats. Breast milk is loaded with fat. Probably 60% or so of breast milk is fat. And by the way, you mentioned how we've been uh, we've been just uh, uh, hypnotized with uh, this idea of low fat this and low fat that, and you got to watch your fats and you got to stay away from saturated fats. Today, savvy nutritionists understand that not only is fat important as a source of energy for the heart and for the brain, but when you eat fat, that allows your body to access and transport fatty vitamins, vitamins D. Well, vitamins I even e, see in mainstream a. news now what you and others were saying decades ago. They're now admitting that so many people have Alzheimer's because they're on these low-fat diets. That's and, right. And you need the coconut oil, all of it, that they got taken out of the popcorn back in the early 90s. I mean, th th look, the system knows what they're doing. And then you put people on statins that on record literally just eat your brain because your Alex, brain's made out of cholesterol. I mean, this is insane. Alex, the quintessential human uh, biomolecule, which separates human beings and animals from plants, is cholesterol. If you want to be a fern plant... Stop making cholesterol. That's the distinction between a plant which sits in the ground and doesn't move. Women doesn't wonder why their bodies fall apart, exactly. why their skin falls apart, and they're putting basically cholesterol creams on their face instead of eating it. And by the way, one of the most important elements for your skin is cholesterol. You can't have healthy skin without cholesterol. Many skin diseases like eczema and psoriasis are, 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 are associated with problems processing cholesterol in the skin. In fact, one of the best things you could ever do for your skin is eat liver and eat eggs and drink milk and eat cholesterol. I was about to say, I've read Michelle Obama's, uh, you know, because she tells us what our kids are supposed to eat in the schools. And then the, it, what she wants is what they eat. And, and it's literally prison food. 
it doesn't ever say GMO is bad or aspartame is right. bad or sugar is right. bad. What they say is bad right. is just any amount of fat, period. They don't differentiate trans fat, some artificial fat that they allow us to eat that probably should be illegal instead right. of the good healthy fats. So, so what are healthy fats? Even on the even on the food pyramid, it says it just says fats and oils. It doesn't distinguish trans fats, processed fats from all the other kinds of fats. It's just fats and oils. What are some of the good fats? Well, as long as it's not processed, it's probably a good fat. Saturated fats, good fat. In spite of what you may have heard, saturated fats are very important for especially for cardiovascular health and even for brain health. Coconut oil fat, palm oil fat. Um, uh, unsaturated fats, you got to be a little bit careful with, but we know there's two uh, unsaturated fats called essential fatty acids that are uh, unbelievably important for the health of the nervous system, fish oil? the health of the skin. Fish oil is a, not exactly an essential fatty acid, but it's a derivative of essential fatty acid. Very, very important for blood health and for uh, cardiovascular health, for brain health, for skin diseases like eczema and psoriasis. Fish oil capsules can be very helpful. Uh, omega-6 fats, for a long time, nutritionists were telling you, oh, you don't need to eat omega-6 fats. Everybody's got enough omega-6 fats. Well, as it turns out, that's not true. We need omega-6 fats and we need omega-3 fats. And here's the thing about fats that people miss, Alex. When you eat fat, it helps your body transport and access fatty nutrients that are in those fatty foods. So you eat, you eat some coconut oil, you eat butter, or you eat some kind of fat, that turns on the bile and that turns on the pancreatic enzymes and that turns on the stomach juices that will now allow you to access vitamin A, to access vitamin D, to access vitamin E, to access vitamin K. So if you're depriving yourself of saturated fat, if you're depriving yourself of unsaturated fatty acids and essential fatty acids, you are depriving yourself, in essence, of fatty vitamins vitamins and fatty nutrients that can have uh, beneficial effects on literally every single system in your body. And this is an important distinction, by the way, between watery substances and fatty substances. Watery materials like the B vitamins and vitamin C and electrolytes, these are nutritional substances that dissolve in water. These watery substances are used by the body quickly. Because they're watery, they go right to work. They're used for energy. They give your heart energy. They give your your brain energy. Let me shift they gears into another subject. What, why is iodine, because you always say it's so important in epigenetics, dude. Iodine is crazy, crazy important. Iodine, well, first of all, if you ask your, your average doctor, your average layperson about iodine, they'll tell you about the thyroid, and that's true. Iodine is a very important element for the thyroid, but it's way more important than just for the thyroid. Iodine is a glandular support vitamin. That means the, uh, uh, the uh, various glands in the body, the thyroid gland and the adrenal glands and the pancreas and the thymus, these are uh, glands secrete hormones that's what a, a gland does it's a it's a structure in the body that makes and secretes hormones and they need I iodine to be that engine exactly iodine is the juice that makes the glands work that means without iodine your glands won't work as effectively which means your hormones won't work as effectively and that means nothing will work as effectively so via this glandular and hormone connection iodine is important for the functioning of every single cell in the body that makes it vitally important and what's scary about iodine is if you're not using your nascent iodine if you're not supplementing with iodine it's very difficult to get from food unless you're eating a lot of seafood iodine is basically an ocean mineral and this is why people who live in the middle part of the country where they're not getting a lot of seafood tend to suffer from goiter and other iodine and, and they're so disease. obese yeah absolutely and it's just the brain is also very stay important. there we'll talk about it when we come back Top Obama aides says many more executive actions to come, including legalizing illegal aliens and restricting the Second Amendment. A record 10,996, 447 are now on disability in this country. That story's up at DrudgeReport.com. Stocks tumble amid Fed rate talk. That's right, CNBC is reporting stocks decline amid Fed rate talk. Dow drops 150 points. U.S. stocks fell sharply today after two-session rise with the Fed's Bank of Philadelphia president, Charles Plosser, saying the central bank might have to raise rates sooner than some have expected. That would signal the end of QE Unlimited and a very serious situation, obviously. Pharmacist Ben Fuchs will be with us 20 minutes the next hour. I will get to a bunch of breaking news. Bunch of articles up on Infowars.com and PrisonPlanet.com. Paul Craig Roberts has a new article out called Militarist Bunkum, getting into Obama's claims he can attack anybody he wants anytime without even congressional authorization. There's a new video out. College students are experts on Farrell. Who's Farrell? But have that's, no. That's Pharrell. Pharrell. Yeah, Despicable Me.
All the music. Oh, Despicable Me, but have no idea what Benghazi is. Well, see, I don't know what Pharrell is, but I know what Benghazi is. The plan to kill the Internet by Paul Joseph Watson and myself. You want to know how they're planning to kill it and want to try to stop it. There it is. Wisconsin police reassure residents they won't be shot at from military trucks they're getting. Report says 50% of people are conspiracy theorists. You're probably one of them. I want to go over that article because it says, do you believe the government wants to suppress alternative medicine? You're mentally ill and have, you know, opposition to authority disorder. Do you believe government ever does anything wrong? You're insane. Do you believe pigs can fly and that Obama's God? You're normal. So uh, that's just some of the news that's up on Infowars.com. There's a ton more, obviously. You can check out the new site design. We're slowly augmenting the site. It's got a new whole bottom area with new subsections and new articles. So be sure and scroll down on the front page of Infowars.com. Uh, getting back in the three or four minutes we have left here, obviously I'm bringing up iodine because I sell what I believe is the best quality iodine out there. True nascent turns electric blue on paper, not, not black. Uh, and that's because from what we looked at, it's not bound and, and literally goes right into the bloodstream uh, from what uh, Dr. Group and others have said. And we've also been tweaking more than doing tests with, even, with an even more supercharged type, but that'll be announced soon. But I mean, look, I was looking at what to use. I used this for three or four months before I decided to roll out with it and mass produce it. Life-changing. The clarity, the mental clarity, my skin. I'm able to get a really good chestnut tan now with a lot less sun and I don't burn. What's going on with the iodine in a minute and a half? Iodine is extremely important for brain health. In fact, one of the leading causes of mental retardation around the world in, in, in babies and children is iodine deficiency. As I was saying earlier, in landlocked countries, countries that don't have access to seafood, iodine deficiency is somewhat common. And by the way, one of the best ways for women to protect themselves from breast cancer, which now affects one out of every eight women, aside from breastfeeding, breastfeeding is a great way to protect yourself from breast cancer. It may be that the epidemic in breast cancer is related to lack of breastfeeding or, or shortages of breastfeeding, but in addition to lowering your risk for, in addition to uh, breast uh, uh, breastfeeding, lowering your risk for breast cancer, iodine is a tremendous way not to only to reduce your risk from breast cancer, but also to reduce the likelihood of fibrocystic breasts, to uh, reduce the uh, any, uh, reduce uh, uh, issues with breast diseases of any kind, to reduce issues with menstrual cramps and PMS for the female reproductive system. We know what a big problem endometriosis is. You go to a doctor for endometriosis. It's so elementary. We don't have breast milk. We don't have iodine. I mean, they're just targeting us at every level. They take out iodine, they add bromine. I mean, it's a conspiracy. Let's come back and talk about it. Third hour coming up with Pharmacist Ben Fuchs, folks. Check out his website, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com. All right, stay with us. Again, it is May 20th, 2014 on this Tuesday edition. Pharmacist Ben Fuchs is with us another 20 minutes or so. There's so much going on in health news. I've got so many questions, but... I noticed they stopped spraying iodine mixed with um, alcohol on strawberries to kill bugs and started spraying, what I guess, bromide or bromide on it instead. So, and, and I know back in the 20s they said, you know, put iodine in the salt because people were being brain damaged, birth defects. And then they took it out in the 60s. Who is making all these decisions, pharmacist Ben Fuchs? What do you think is going on? I mean, clearly it is a program to make us absolutely dumber than a box of rocks. Uh, and it's working, too. I mean, uh, look what's happening Look what's happening around the world. Why are people accepting po uh, poisoning of the air through chemtrails, poisoning of the water with uh, antibiotics and drugs, poisoning everywhere, uh, poisoning the food we eat with pesticides and poisoning the very genetics of the food we're eating with GMO crops? Why do we accept this? How, how does this even become something that, 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 isn't, that we don't question? It's because we have been dumbified and made docile and mollified through fluoride in the water, through prescription drugs, through television, and through subliminal programming for the last 100 years, maybe even more, Alex. And it's time we wake up. And this is the beautiful thing about what you're doing is, and what, what, what people like you are doing is we're waking people up. We're helping people understand that the ones who are making the decisions for us are government people, medical people, healthcare professionals who are making these kinds of decisions don't 
have our interest in mind. The first step is to wake up to this. The second step is to start to take control. We can no longer participate in the medical model, in doing what the doctor says, in going and eat, going, driving through McDonald's and Taco Bell and participating and eating the corporate swill, in taking prescription drugs and even worse, uh, uh, submitting our, our children to prescription drug poisonings. We absolutely have to take the ball and put it back into our own court by eating correct food, by eating less food by making sure you're getting on a good nutritional supplement program by using the beyond tangy tangerine by using uh, the nascent iodine by listening to Infowars, by participating and gathering information for your for your own being a researcher yourself understanding that this new world order that we're living in this globalist culture that we're living in does not have the individuals uh, individuals benefits in mind the new world order the corporatocracy the global government is not about the individual the individual has to be about the individual and that means we have to do things ourselves Cells. I believe we can. I believe, just like you do, Alex, that there is a greatness inherent in being a human being. This greatness is expressed through our genetics. This greatness is expressed through our cells. This greatness is expressed through our immune system. This greatness is expressed through our body's ability to heal and regenerate itself on a moment-to-moment -moment basis. What we have to begin to do is acknowledge our greatness. Acknowledge the power that's inherent in being a human being. Begin to depend on ourselves. Begin to become responsible for ourselves. And let the corporate government, let the world, New World Order die on the vine. If, they, if we don't support it, if we don't, aren't complicit in helping it grow, it will die on the vine and let it. Good riddance. Well said. We're going to go to break and come back in one final long segment with you. And I thought Maybe we should open the phones up right now for specific questions, uh, supplement questions, pharmacy questions, breastfeeding questions, iodine questions uh, for you. You want to take a few calls? I'd love to. All right, folks, for Ben Fuchs, questions, quick question, quick answer, 800-259-9231. He's only with us for one more segment, so we'll get right to you. 800 259 92 31. Your questions for pharmacist Ben Fuchs. And I'll also get his take on Obamacare. I mean, people call it a train wreck. It's designed to wreck the economy and bring in eugenics control. We'll get his brief take on that as well. 800 259 9231. I'm Alex Jones. Our new sites are infowars.com and prisonplanet.com. JAMA, one of the big medical journals, says you're insane. If you believe cell phones are causing cancer, I'm not kidding, and that the government is refusing to act. GMOs are being used for population control. The government suppresses alternative medicine. Vaccinations cause autism. HIV was intentionally being sent to African communities in Africa. All of those are true on record. And by the way, to illustrate that, I'm going to cover more in the next segment. Here is AP. The chemicals chosen for bisphenol A, the plastic formula, is one of the few that actually has estrogen mimickers. It's done on purpose. Uh, the glyphosate was chosen. It causes absolute re reproductive problems in women. On record, that's not debated. We're going to talk to pharmacist Ben Fuchs and take your calls about that. But the printer ink universally has the chemicals in it. The plastic leaching, the everything. This is AP. But remember, doctors, there's no population control. The chemical that's added to it, how do you pronounce that again? Minnesota bans antibacterial chemical from soaps. Minnesota bans antibacterial chemicals from soaps. Triclosand. Minnesota bans common antibacterial chemical from soaps as pressure on industry grows, triclosand. And it says it's in 70 plus percent of the, quote, antibacterials and soaps, period. And guess what? Triclosand is used in an estimated 75 percent. But now the Food and Drug Administration has said that it needs to be removed because guess what? It mimics and disrupts hormones critical, reading from the AP, for reproduction and development. 
at least in lab animal tests, and contributed to the development of resistant bacteria. And again, that shows the government's not pure evil. The FDA's own scientist in 2001, and then again in 2010, almost unanimously, thousands of toxicologists, scientists, medical doctors, sent briefs in saying take hydrofluorosilicic acid out of the water. It's brain damaging, it doesn't help the teeth, it's horrible. Finally, there were lawsuits and they can't use it as a pesticide, it's supposed to be phased out. Kills bugs. The old-fashioned bug killer was that. I'm gonna keep Fuchs at the bottom of the hour if we can do it to take these calls. The point is, is that here's an illustration of how JAMA, the big journal of medicine, comes out and says, doctors, look out for conspiracy theorists. How do you tell? Well, they think GMOs are designed to reduce population. In all the rat studies, they make them sterile by three generations almost completely. I, I mean, they, they piggyback stuff in all the computers to spy on us. They're piggybacking in the gene traits, and it's come out. I mean, the Kaiser Wilhelm Institutes, for heaven's sakes, now is one of the biggest groups in Germany with GMOs under a new name. Cold Springs Harbor didn't even change the name of the worldwide command base of eugenics. They're the ones behind all of this. The fertility's dropping. The third world fertility didn't drop till 15 years ago. They started adopting all these chemicals. And you can say, well, there's too many people. Well, here's the deal. Let's just be honest about what's going on here is my point. Let's stop being dishonest about what's happening and what's going on. We're being manipulated in a Petri dish scientifically in the White House science are John P. Holdren, currently serving, wrote a book the year I was born 40 years ago with other eugenicists, Paul Ehrlich and his wife, Ann Ehrlich, calling for world government, calling for forced sterilization, calling for chemicals to be put in the water. Okay? Pharmacist Ben Fuchs, I want to go to phone calls and quick questions for you, but there's an illustration right there of how JAMA is coming out saying, look out for people that think, quote, cell phones are causing cancer. The London Guardian came out with a major British study last week and said, undoubtedly, it's causing brain cancer. Un it's a microwave system. I mean, uh, GMOs are being used for population control. Of course they are. Government's suppressing alternative medicine. Of course they are. What do you think the FDA does? Vaccinations are causing autism. They're on record link to it. HIV intentionally being sent to African-American in Africa, I mean, they shot black people up with syphilis. What do you say to this? It's not what I say to it is it's not a theory. And it's uh, it's definitely conspiracy because it's multiple people. By definition, it's a conspiracy and it's not theoretical. The fact of the matter is, is that government has an interest in maintaining itself like all organizations do. There is an antagonistic relationship between the government and the individual. You and I are individuals. That means by nature, there is going to be an antagonistic relationship between the governed and the governed, and that between government and the governed. And that's unfortunate, and it's not a theory, no matter what JAMA says. And how the heck can they dispute the fact that you can manip that uh, electronics, like a cell phone, can uh, will uh, uh, tweak the genome and manipulate the cell, which at the end of the day is an, a, a bioelectrical system? How can, it, how can it be avoided? But, I mean, they knew 30 years ago when they did cell phone studies that it was giving rats cancer. Of course. It vibrates the DNA at point-blank range into your brain. The contract says don't hold the phones up to your head. DNA is electrical. DNA emits electrical energy. DNA is a radio frequency transmitter. DNA emits light. DNA emits something called biophotons. This is, I'm not making this up. Go on Google and look it up. No, no, that's how jellyfish glow in the dark bioluminescence and your DNA is the same thing. So of course, if you have an electrical system, you can interfere with it with another electrical system. That's not rocket science. Well, no, I mean, I mean, literally, it's a microwave relay system. You put it right up to your head and they get the brain tumor right on the side. And what do you think happens when you put it next to a cell? Of course, you're going to create changes, epigenetic changes, by the way. And all the changes that we're talking about in a cell that occur with fluoride, that will occur with BPA and, and estrogen mimickers, these are, by definition, epigenetic modifications. The gene, this is so important, Alex, the gene is responsive to the environment. The gene listens oh, to the environment. Oh, no, you just have a gene to get a brain tumor on the side of your head where you use the right. phone. You deserve to get it because you had bad genes no right. your genes say if you put a microwave oven but don't worry the london guardian said it's only for those that use it 15 hours a week right i see people with their kids everywhere holding them up to their heads and they literally tell me i'm a conspiracy theorist 
How come with the trillions of dollars in the last 50 years that we spent on this war on cancer, cancer rates are just as high, if not higher, as they were uh, 40 years ago? Well, they're a lot higher. I've seen a sevenfold increase in women's All right. uh, uh, um Lung cancer. That was a really strange report I saw on ABC News last year. Why? It seems like women are getting hit harder. Well, women have more fat in their bodies, and toxins tend to accumulate in fat. Women are also producing more estrogen, and estrogen tends to be a hormone that's associated with the stress response. So between estrogen and body fat, women are much more, and dealing with men for that matter, women are much more predisposed to diseases like cancer and autoimmune diseases than men are. Listen to you kissing up to the women. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Oh, boy. We have to put up with them, though, too. I mean, come on. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's go to some phone calls here. But you heard it. I just showed you the London Guardian. Let's put that back up on screen. But JAMA, again, that's the Journal of the American Medical Association, intensive mobile phone users at higher risk of brain cancer, Study says one of thousands, but well, don't worry, it's only 15 hours each month. Almost everybody I know is on the cell phone 15 hours a month. They literally give us devices to hard boil our brains, and then they have JAMA making fun of us, telling their doctors, you know, look out of your patient talks like this. This is crazy, isn't it, Fuchs? Conspiracy theorists. I'm, you know, it's not a theory. That's all I got to say. Whatever, it's a, they it said it's not real. There are no brain tumors. Be quiet. Right. The, 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 pay no attention to the man behind the curtain. Scott in Minnesota, you're on the air. Go ahead. Michigan, go ahead. That was an exciting go. phone call. Uh, let's talk to Danny in Tennessee. You're on the air. Go ahead. Hey, Alex. How's it going today? Pretty good, brother. What's on your mind? I just had a question for Ben. I've got a 17-year-old son. He's got um, he's a good kid, but he's, he goes through mood swings. And I was just wanting to know if there was any kind of supplement out there that I could get him to kind of even out his uh, his mood swings. Because yeah, I, I'm like y'all, I'm big anti-pharmaceutical. I don't want him on any kind of prescription. No. I would say, uh, how how much exercise is he getting? Uh. Well, Alex, he, uh, he's very big in the sports. He plays uh, three sports in, in school. So, I mean, he's a very active kid. Yeah, I, and I activity, mean, activity sometimes can be a problem because activity, especially if he's, he's athletic, he's burning through protein. When kids are burning through protein, if they don't have access to a steady stream of protein, they're going to eat a lot of sugar. When you eat a lot of, and by sugar, I mean bread and pasta. And that messes with the rice. dopamine, right? It messes with, well, once you go into low blood sugar, then your body starts to secrete stress hormone to counteract the low blood sugar. And that's where you get the jitteriness and the anxiety. The low blood sugar causes a, a, a drop in mood, a slowishness, a slowness, a sluggishness. Yeah, do you have him on a super high powered uh, protein, a uh, non soy? Um, Alex, the, uh, the only uh, supplement I've got him on right now is the whey protein that you advertise. Yeah, uh, milk protein's good. Uh, uh, pharmacist Fuchs, you're the expert. I, I, iodine, B vitamins, essential fatty acids, the mighty 90 essential nutrients, and more protein. That's the remedy. That's the way I would handle it. Yeah, I would get him beyond insulin. Tangy Tangerine because at InfoWarsHealth.com because, you know, if he's that active, it's either the problem is they're too active or they're not active is what I've experienced. And the, he might be uh, you know, uh, deficient in something, and then that can be linked to it, correct, uh, pharmacist? That's exactly right. When people are, when kids are athletic, they're burning through protein, and the tendency when you're burning through protein is to start to snack on things, and that's that's a big problem when it comes to bipolar issues or. Oh yeah, 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 no, 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 no. That's why I'm so fat. Is I used to be a big jock, but I ate whatever I wanted. Right. And you're then burning, and, and, you're burning through protein, and then you were snacking on foods to replace to get energy. And then I quit working out, turned into Job of the Hut. Caller, I hope that answers your question. But I mean, again, I would just try different things. Thank you so much. We're going to talk to New Jersey. And we're going to talk to Randy, Mariah, and Barbara straight ahead. Be ready with your questions so Fuchs can answer them. Stay with us. All right, pharmacist Ben Fuchs is our guest. Really appreciate his time with us. So Rammstein bringing us in. Forgotten how good their music is, at least to me. It might sound like torture to some of you. Let's go ahead and talk to uh, New Jersey. From New Jersey, you're on the air. You got your question for Ben. Go ahead. Absolutely, Alex. It is so good to talk to you again. We met on September 11th of 2007, and uh, it's been a very long time. So God bless you and your family. Uh, ben, 
Uh, my wife, we just found out she's pregnant. We cannot be more excited. She's five weeks. Uh, we already eat extremely healthy, as much farm to table as possible, as much organic as possible. And just curious if there's a website or a book that I should get to read more about these epigenetics and just better food sources and what she should be taking aside from the folic acid she's already on. Get Dr. Wallach's new book, Epigenetics. My recommendation, my in my opinion, it's one of the best books on epigenetics and the easiest ones to read. Because he was a top zoologist and kept noticing why the animals were dying in the zoos. They weren't getting the trace minerals, but go ahead. There's another one called DNA, Pirates of the Sacred Spiral by a guy named Len Horowitz, who's really, really quite eloquent uh, about the idea of manipulation of the genome. Those are two good books that I'd recommend. For babies, for uh, uh, moms who are, uh, uh, who are pregnant, who are building a baby, protein is the key building substance, and it's the one macronutrient that seems to be deficient in most of our diets. Making sure that you're on whey pro or your mom, uh, the mom is on whey protein is a great idea. Also, egg protein. These are building proteins. Milk and egg are are building proteins. They're designed to build life. P plant protein has its upside, certainly, but it's not designed to build life like animal protein. Well, is. look, there's a lot of problems associated with meat and the treatment of animals, and I get all that. The issue is the globalists don't want us eating uh, meat for a reason. They had Nazi studies where they were planning to put the slave populations only on grains and things. They right. found it made them more docile. We know chimpanzees that eat meat are bigger, more intelligent, more vicious. I mean, they, they want us docile. They do not want us eating meat. That's right. Grains contain natural opiates. That's why bread is the opiate of the people. Grains contain natural opiates that keep you uh, keep you docile, keep you calm. Uh, and meat, on the other hand, has uh, has more uh, 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 dynamic factors, animal proteins in general. And there is a problem, of course, with ethical treatment of animals. I agree with that. Uh, but, but as far as proteins go for building a baby, think eggs, think uh, think whey protein. Also, the B vitamins are very important. Not just folic acid. All of the B vitamins are very very important. They're especially important for epigenetics and for genet uh, for building a healthy genome. Zinc is stupendously important for developing fetuses. 50 milligrams a day of zinc. Copper is also important to balance zinc. And of course, iodine is what important. What about where they say you can get too much folic acid? You can't from a natural source like spinach, right? Well, it's, there's different kinds of folic acid. There's the synthetic kind of folic acid, and then there's a the natural kind of folic acid. Certainly, the natural folic acid is better uh, than the synthetic kind. I don't know about taking too much folic acid because it's water-soluble. You'll probably excrete it. But what you want to do is when you're taking your folic acid, you want to take it with the entire B complex. Last but not least, omega-3 and omega-6 essential fatty acids are all very important. Using an essential fatty acid supplement, making sure you're eating fish, which has a reputation for being brain food for the fetus, is very important. Uh, and then coconut oil and uh, some of the saturated Yeah, I love to eat fish helpful. at night because I have great dreams when I eat it. It's important for the brain, absolutely. Choline, lecithin. No, I mean, uh, why is fish, fish is almost like a hallucinogen. It's amazing. <laughs> It contains two very important elements for the brain. Actually, three important elements for the brain. It's got iodine, it's got omega-3 derivatives, and it's got something called choline, C-H-O-L-I-N-E, which is also a very important epigenetic factor. As it turns out, for your mo uh, for the mom-to-be, for the questioner, uh, using choline supplements can also be very important for the baby. All right, caller, I hope that answers your question. You know what, Ben, if you got to go, you got to go. Can you come back and talk to three more callers? Sure. All right, you're awesome. Pharmacist Ben Fuchs is our guest. Long segment coming up. We can only talk to him about four minutes because I've got... The Satanist audio and video. I don't even know what to call this. It's coming up. Uh, but it illustrates that, that there's these type of crazy people out there. But then the Christians that are going after them, they seem pretty weird too. <laughs> so I guess different strokes for different folks. But uh, we got the video now from last Friday in Harvard's Satanic Debacle, Lessons from a Black Mass Cancellation. And you'll get to see and hear the Satanists go crazy. Uh, it just illustrates these people really do exist, and they're tuned into some really bad energy, folks. We'll be right back. Stay with us. We're on the mo The music's fitting for the Satanists that are coming up. People that just want to dominate everyone are all about themselves. The thing is, they're weak. You really know who they are. They only thrive in societies that, for some reason... Tolerate them. That's coming up in a few minutes. Pharmacist Ben Fuchs is our guest. Let's talk to Barbara in Florida. You got your questions for Ben. You've got questions. I think he's got answers. Go ahead. Well, I want to say thank you very much for taking my call. You're awesome. And I want to know about thyroiditis. I have two nodules on my thyroid. Uh, my blood work came back 
they say normal, but I would think it's in the higher range of the normal. And I was taking nascent iodine for the past five months. I didn't know if that aggravated a condition that I may already have. And I have a good diet. I've conquered chronic fatigue and my allergies by changing everything. So any suggestions? Yeah, you're dealing with a residual probably from your chronic fatigue. There's a very important relationship between the thyroid and your body's stress gland, which is called the adrenal glands. When the adrenal glands become overworked and they're constantly kicking in because you're either eating a lot of sugary foods or you're under a lot of physical stress or psychological stress, the adrenal glands will become overworked and the thyroid will, will slow down in response. So your thyroiditis may be secondary to a problem with the adrenal glands and that could be a result of, the, of whatever was causing the chronic fatigue. Uh, I, would, I would guess that you had something going on in terms of your diet, in terms of your digestive system. That's usually what's, uh, that's usually what's involved with thyroid problems. Uh, continue on. If you're not taking the iodine or if you're uh, stopped taking the iodine, I would get back on it. Iodine is extremely important well, for Well, explain thyroid. that because you have to have that. But if you don't have it, the body will use something else, right? Well, the body will use bromine which is to, which, uh, or chlorine. And most of us are getting plenty of chlorine through tap water. So if you're not getting iodine, your body will absorb chl chlorine and bromine more effectively. In fact, your thyroid. Will attempt now, to what's use the it. detoxing thing that? Uh, That's very interesting. I was about to say that. It's very interesting, Alex. When you start taking iodine, all the bromine and chlorine that have been accumulating in your thyroid because you weren't, didn't have the iodine will come out in your blood, and you'll start to experience some of the toxicity associated with excess bromine in the blood. Yeah, what's that name? Because it's called uh, bromonosis. It's called bromonosis. I think it's what you're thinking of. And some of the signs of bromonosis include itching and rashes. Uh, problems yeah, with I don't want to get gross here, but 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 he warned me. Um, Diarrhea, loose stools. Well, I mean, not even that, but but it was. Uh, I was warned by you know, Dr. Ed Group. He said, "Listen, you know, you're a little bit overweight. You're trying to exercise and all this." He goes, "When you take this, two weeks to a month, you're going to feel very toxic. Yeah. Stuff's going to come out of your skin." Yeah. And I don't normally have oily skin or anything, and now now I don't. All this stuff came out. That's I right. I felt like I had a hangover for a week and a half. Yeah. And then it was all you know past, but. As your body fat was breaking down, as you were losing fat, all the toxins that were stored in the fat. And that's one of the one of the things the body will do when it can't handle toxicity. It'll store it in fat. It'll store it in fat in the gut. It'll store it in fat in the breasts. It'll store it in fat in the glutes. And as you start to lose weight, as you start to lose body fat, all those toxins will end up in your blood. And that's probably what you experience. Could it be when you take iodine and you have all those toxins in your thyroid, it pumps Bromine. them out? Correct. Bromin, that's called bromonosis. And that's one of the things that happen when people start to supplement with a, with a good iodine supplement, like the nascent iodine but that's not a reason not to use the iodine that's a reason to continue using the iodine and make sure that the bromine doesn't reattach to the thyroid so i would be staying on the iodine supplements and by the way there's other nutrients that are very helpful for the thyroid especially the b vitamins and also vitamin a and also essential fatty acids and then don't forget about the digestive link there's a very very important digestive connection to uh, uh, thyroid issues especially graves disease and autoimmune disease hashimoto's thyroid and other autoimmune diseases right. of the thyroid ma'am hope that answers your question does that answer your question barbara I was wanting to know if I should take back, take the nascent iodine again or stop yes, taking yes, it. Yes, yes, so yes, I would. My question. I mean, that's, I would, that's what I would do. I mean, I'm not telling you what to do. I mean, I mean I maybe she it. should get it out of salt if she's having an issue with, with another brand. Or maybe uh, she could talk to her physicians, what I would tell you. I'm not going to give you advice. I'm just a lay person here. Uh, but, I mean, you need iodine, period. You need, you need iodine. Alex, Alex and Barbara, these are essential. We're talking about something that is essential. It's not optional. You'll die without you, it. You'll die without it, exactly. This is something that the body cannot make and must have. That's what it means to be essential. So if you deprive yourself of supplemental iodine, you sure better you better make sure you're eating a lot of fish and not eating a lot of seafood. That's pretty much the only place All right, where you're going to We're almost out of time because i got to play this piece coming up. Let's go to Randy in Oklahoma. Quick question, Randy. Okay, real quick here. Way to go, T-Rex. Keep it up, by the way. Hey, uh, Ben, a question on policy and, and if time a medical one. On policy, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm on the ballot for a House district up here in Oklahoma. Uh, I'd like to get in where we can stop the domination of the, of the of doctor training and the curriculum in medical schools. Is there? Is, have you seen any groups that will be no. ha have any good suggestions? You know, for for making changes in that, or am I off track on 
We oh, as individuals have to begin to understand that this deification of the medical model is self-serving and it's perpetuated by the medical model itself. It's not in our interest. These are not deities. And there's nothing, de there's nothing divine about the medical model. In fact, it is anti-divine. And to, de to deify the medical model is only in the interest of the medical model itself. It's not in the interest of the people. Hey, I'm sorry to the other callers. I'm sorry to Ben Fuchs. I got to get to this piece. Ben, thank you for all the time. Thank Your show you, comes on every day on GCNlive.com and syndicated across the country right before this transmission. Thank you so much. It was great Thank having you, you on. Thank you, Alex. There goes pharmacist Ben Fuchs. Spent about an hour and a half with us. Now